In this lecture, we want to talk about kernel of an isogeny and show that it is finitely generated. But before that, let us fix some notation and um, emphasize that this kernel of isogeny makes sense. So endomorphism of elliptic curve is nothing but homomorphisms from E to E. So we have already seen that there is a group structure on E. So more precisely, you can say this is nothing but isogenies from E to E. And these isogenies, they will form a ring under addition and multiplication. So you add two isogenies over a point, you can get like this, and you can multiply them like this. So this is the definition for uh, endomorphism of E. So again, th this is nothing but set of isogenies from E to E, which form a ring. So which is a ring under addition and multiplication. So now let us come to the result which we want to prove in this lecture. So say we are given an isogeny from one elliptic curve E1 to another elliptic curve E2 and this isogeny is given in a standard form over some field K. So this phi, we have seen this before, um, P over Q and S over T Y. So this is our standard form. So the first lemma which we want to discuss is this. So say we are given in this isogeny from elliptic curve E1 to elliptic curve E2, and this is isogeny is given a standard form like this. Uh, so the first curve E1k is y square equals to f1x, and second curve is say y square equals to f2x. So then this denominator here, you cube it, this will divide square of this. So q cube divides t square. And this t square of this will divide q cube times f1. So this t square will divide this uh, denominator cubed, but now multiplied with this f1 right here. Moreover, this is important. Both q and t, these two, have the same set of roots in closure of k. So this elliptic curve is defined over k, both these denominators have the same set of roots in the closure of K. So this is a kind of surprising fact. So now the important cor corollary. So what is the kernel of the isogeny? So kernel of the isogeny is obviously you can think of it in terms of uh, group structure. So precisely those elements which will get mapped to zero of elliptic curve two. So kernel of phi is precisely concretely from here is precisely those points at which this denominator vanishes. So we just focused on this denominator. So we're only worried about the roots of the denominator. So obviously we know that Q and T have the same set of roots, but here we are saying just this Q. So obviously if Q is vanishing, T will also vanish because they have the same set of roots. So where X is A fine. So X uh, we are writing in a fine form a b one that is we are writing in projective form so we are writing in projective form so again we are saying that q and t have the same set of roots but the multiplicity of these roots in q and t might be different and once you know that uh, the kernel of the isogeny is given just by the roots of this denominator here of the first term so we are only focused on the first term and the denominator of the first term then you can say it is finitely generated. So kernel is finitely generated subgroup of uh, this uh, E1 K bar. So now we can see this corollary simply comes from the corollary above. So you know that kernel of phi from here is generated by the roots of this polynomial because you have to have this polynomial equal to zero. So Q of X will have at most degree Q of X roots in k bar so there are only finite roots because degree of q of x is finite it is a polynomial and if you plug in each root in our elliptic curve equation you can get at most correspondingly two points so say you have root rho you plug it in here you can get y as at most this but all the rows have a finite number so at most you will get twice the number of roots as a points in the kernel of phi. So you can easily see the kernel of phi is finitely generated subgroup and this subgroup is essentially generated by the roots of this q of x and roots are finite because the degree here is finite. So let us now prove this lemma first. 
So let e2 be given as y square equals to x cube plus ax plus b. So plug in these values of isogeny here. So for y, you plug in this value. So for y square, you get s by t y square. For x, you plug in p over q. So for x, we are plugging in p over q. So again, for x, you have p over q and so on. Now for y square, you set it equal to f of one. So because this isogeny is acting on e1 and for e1, you have this y square equals to f of one. So this y square you are replacing by f of one and you clear the denominator. So to clear the denominators, you multiply this entire thing out by t square times q cube. So you get q cube s square and y square you have made f1 and here you obviously are multiplying throughout by t square and you have this numerator with the denominators cleared. So you have p cube plus a p q square plus b q cube because you're multiplying by q cube here t square remains. Now when we constructed the standard form we know that p and q are relatively prime and s and t are relatively prime to each other. Now since p and q are relatively prime so this q cannot divide this entire term because it has p cube in it and q cannot divide uh, this term because you have a factor here adding. So q cube has no choice but to divide t square. So you have q cube divides t square. Similarly here this t and s are relatively prime by construction. So t square doesn't have a choice but to divide q cube times f1. So t square divides q cube times f1. And that is precisely what we had to prove in the first part. Q cube divides t square and then t square divides q cube f1. Now we have to show both q and t have the same set of roots. Now first notice that every root of q is a root of t. So from here you know that q cube divides t square but 3 does not divide 2 so it has to be the case that q cube divides t. So if you are a root of q then you have to be root of t. So this is clear. Now focus on the second equation that is t square divides q cube f1. So there is a square here that means there is a double root. So every root of t is a double root of q cube of f1. But e1 is a non-singular curve. So the condition of non-singularity is very important because this uh, would essentially say that you know there are no double roots in it because it is a smooth curve so the dimension wouldn't jump. So this we talked about in tangent spaces in algebraic geometry. So since elliptic curve is non-singular it does not have double roots. So if you have a root of t it will occur at most once in f of 1 but th there is a double root so the other root has to lie in q cube. So the, the possibly second root so if the first root even if it lies in f1 the second root must belong to q cube and therefore it has to belong to q. So thus we have shown that both q and t have the same sets of root in the uh, closure here. So now we have to just prove this corollary. Now we want to prove this corollary. Essentially we want to say that the kernel of i is generated precisely by the roots of this denominator and where x is in a fine form like this. So for this corollary we need this lemma. So first we start by putting this uh, isogeny in a projective form. So in a projective form we have to write it as x0, y0, z0 and this is the x0, y term and z0 is 1. Just like here in projective form. So first you clear the denominators here, multiply it throughout by q times t and you get something like this. So now rho is the common root of both q and t and q cube divides t square. So this we had shown before. So rho occurs more times in t than in q as a root because q cube is dividing t square so rho has to occur more times in q compared to t. So now what you can do is you can start dividing by x minus rho of c. So you start factoring out this root rho. So if there was just uh, we were just working in x and y coordinates then this would be x minus z but since we are working in projective coordinate this is x minus rho of c. So you keep on factoring it out. So at some point in time you will completely factor out this root out of q. But it will still remain in the first term and in the second term. So if you plug in this value rho b1 because this rho is here this will give you 0 in the first term because t has still has some roots remaining because it has contains more multiplicity of rho. So rho occurs more times in t 
and here it's also t is there so therefore rho will occur here also still even if you factor everything out corresponding to q so this will also give you zero so you have zero one zero is the mapping and we have already assigned this zero one zero as the uh, zero of the group living on elliptic curve so this is the zero of the group living on elliptic curve too so this was our convention by definition zero one zero is this so we have uh, considered this case the second case we want to consider is what if this b is zero so now there was any b what if this b is zero now if b is zero so that means the y term is zero so this is the b sits right here so y is zero you plug it in here you get zero is equal to f of x so the rho is root of f of x but we are working with non-singular curves therefore this rho cannot be a double root of f of x so again we are talking about this point uh, uh, rho b1 so this point sits on the curve so if b is a zero corresponding to y so this rho has to correspond to x so that's how you get zero is equal to f of rho but this row, as I said before, is not a double root. So now again, we had this form. Now you multiply it throughout by y times z. So this entire thing you multiply by y times z. So this is what you get, p t y z, then you get y square z, you get q t y z. So now you know that y square is equal to f, but this is degree three, this is degree two. So to homogenize it, you multiply by z here. So z y square is f, and that's what we are going to replace y square z with f. That's what we have replaced here. Nothing much has been done. So again, the same story. You have t here, you have t here, and you have q here. So again, q cube divides t square. And again, rho has multiplicity 1 as a root of f. So again, you can keep factoring out the roots. You keep on factoring out the roots. You factor out all the roots corresponding to q. There will be still some remaining corresponding to t. But you can go one step further and when your final step like here you eliminated all the factors corresponding to q like all the roots corresponding to q then you can go one more and you can still get rid of f you, you still will have more roots uh, left in t because q cube is dividing t square so we can factor out the roots again by dividing with x minus rho of c so again if you have factored out all the roots there will be still some row remaining here some row remaining here so if you plug in that row rho b1 again this term will be zero here it will be uh, zero here you will have one here so again this will be zero one zero and zero one zero is the zero of the group which we write like this on the elliptic curve so this was the definition of our zero of the group so we have now shown that uh, you know if rho is the root of q of x then you get a kernel and the kernel is of the form a b1 where a is our root rho